following on from that last video, instead of walking away from the project like I said I would, I kept on messing with it. Like a scab that you know you should leave alone to heal, but you keep on picking at it. Anyway, after I'd packed everything away from filming the end of the video, I got thinking and I still hadn't traced all of the tracks from the power on transistor. Some tracks from this board head off towards the main logic chip, disappearing underneath it, and where they come out, no one knows. But the bottom right leg of this transistor heads into a via here and down to this track, which is soldered to the rigid board. And checking the track thoroughly, there's no continuity. The track, like the ones on the other side, is broken where it's corroded. So I'll get that repaired and then give the camera another try. Well, I wish I'd been filming that. After I repaired that last broken track, I tried the camera again and it was still dead. So I began probing the power on chip and the voltage regulator for signs of life, and there was nothing. Until I moved the PCB again to clip onto a different point, and all of a sudden the camera started working. Foolishly, I moved the probe back onto the voltage regulator, and now the camera is dead again but I got as far as testing the single wind, continuous wind, and the self-timer, all of which worked. I shot 34 shots according to the frame counter, so now I'll go in search of another broken track somewhere up here. It's now a couple of days later and I didn't find any more broken tracks, but I did find that most times I turned the camera on it was dumping all the voltage out of the batteries, so clearly there was a short somewhere. I suspected the shutter speed board, partly because that was the one I moved earlier when the camera started working, and also because you just can't see the tracks. The flexible PCB being sandwiched onto the rigid PCB at that point creates a four-layer board to contend with. Anyway, after much scrabbling and prodding, I did find a fair bit of corrosion between the two boards, which I've cleaned off as best as I can. I also rerouted another suspect track, but the camera still won't work. It seems to be more flaky than a flaky thing. Sometimes the power light will come on, and other times it flashes, but most of the time it won't light at all. When I last tried it, the light was sort of working, so I'll try it on camera now in the hopes that I can get a clip showing some signs of life. And after a few attempts, the power LED is on, but if I press the shutter release, the motor just winds. It's not stuck or anything, but the chip that controls it is just sending out a high frequency rather than turning it on properly. So possibly now one of the chips has died, or maybe it's just a power supply issue, which could of course have destroyed the chips already. Whenever I try to use the oscilloscope, the camera won't turn on, so I can't get any decent readings. Back to the drawing board. At that point I walked away again for a few days, still thinking about the project all the time. On the odd occasion that the camera had partially powered up while the oscilloscope was connected to the voltage regulator, the output seemed to be very noisy. More like a sawtooth than a nice smooth trace, and there are a couple of capacitors listed as preventing oscillation of the constant voltage I see. One of those goes across battery plus and minus, with the other one located next to the voltage regulator itself. I've had those out previously and tested them, but that was before I'd applied any power to the camera. So I popped them out again, and the one across the battery terminals had a very low capacitance and a high resistance. So I replaced that one with another 22 microfarad tantalum capacitor, checked a few more things, then reassembled the camera to try again. Not really expecting anything to happen, I again wasn't filming this bit, but when I turned the camera on, nothing happened. Until I noticed some of the magic smoke escaping from somewhere around here. At this stage I figured that the whole project was now dead and buried, so I sat the camera the correct way up and cautiously turned it on again to see if I could figure out what was getting hot. Nothing was obvious, so I turned it off again. And next time I tried the switch, the moving contact had welded itself to the clear plastic of the shutter button switch. This is consistent with where I thought the smoke came from, so clearly when the camera powers up, something is going to a dead short. 
Thinking about it, I suspect that this was what was happening before when it kept dumping all the voltage out of the batteries. At that time I was using a tired old set of batteries, but I'd swapped to a nice fresh set of batteries. That's probably why I created smoke this time round. So, something's causing an intermittent short. It could be a damaged track that occasionally moves into a position where it isn't shorting. Or it could be a faulty component, like a transistor that occasionally works. Or the worst case, it could be a faulty chip, which would mark the end of the whole project. Preempting this, I've been keeping an eye out for another camera to donate its PCB. I couldn't use a good example because that would be pointless. So when an absolute wreck of a 137MA turned up on eBay, I bought it. It was filthy, the shutter was jammed halfway across the film gate, and it looked like the perfect donor candidate. When it arrived, it didn't look quite as bad in the flesh, so I figured I'd put a set of batteries in just to see what would happen. Oh, for heaven's sake, the blooming thing works. In fact, at a quick glance, everything is working, so I can't rip that one apart for its PCB. Back to the drawing board yet again. So, let's do some testing. Somewhere there is a short that's zapping all the power out of the batteries when I turn the camera on. If I'm lucky, it might be a track on the board, or even a jumper wire that I've connected in the wrong place. Although I doubt that, because the camera did briefly work. It could be a capacitor, of course, so I'll check a few of those. C9 and C4 are OK, but C8 and C7 are reading a dead short so I'll pop one of those out to see if the problem clears. OK, bit of a false alarm. Part of that apparent short circuit was the position of the transfer switch. If I move that, the short clears. And the motor was reading as a short, although it's actually fine, and still working if I connect a battery. However, I did find a minor error. I'd replaced the capacitor across the battery with the 22 microfarad one, but I'd misread the parts list and it should be only 2.2 microfarads. So I'll swap that, replace the parts I've removed and continue looking. Oopsie, I may have spotted another small issue. When I want to use the oscilloscope, I always use batteries in the camera to avoid the old issue of potentially blowing up the scope. And the camera never works, or hardly ever works. Whereas when it's on the bench power supply, I've had more signs of life. So what's the difference? Well, when the batteries are inserted, they press fairly hard against this plastic section containing the battery contacts, and that section moves slightly pushing this rather sloppily soldered blob against the mounting screw, thereby creating a dead short when the camera is powered up. On the plus side, apart from draining the batteries, it might not have done any other harm. Hopefully. OK, short circuit eradicated, and it's now working on battery power. By working, I mean that the power LED illuminates, and not much else, but at least I can now start probing the thing properly. After that, I set up the oscilloscope again, the first target being the voltage regulator. And once I'd seen how bad the spikes coming out of the regulator were, I immediately powered the thing down and am reluctant to apply power again until I can figure out what's happening. This may all be like locking the stable door after the horse has bolted, because those potentially chip-busting spikes may have already done their worst. To understand things better, I really need more of a circuit diagram, so I'm going to remove the PCB again and spend quite a bit of time tracing tracks. This feels very much like I've gone back in time. Ho hum, onward we go. Oh, hello, you're back. I've been doing some colouring in. Would you like to see the one I did earlier? It's quite big, so I'll have to move the camera back to get it all in. In fact, I kept running out of paper and had to add bits on the sides, and even then I ran out of space, so some of it ended up on separate sheets. OK, seriously, that was quite a project, but here is, more or less, a full circuit diagram for the camera, and it gives me a bit more of a clue how power is distributed round the chips. 
I traced every track visually and then confirmed it was physically connected using the multimeter. Along the way I found some more broken tracks and others that had been ok before but have now flexed and broken such as this pair heading to the trigger switch. The copper is mostly pretty flexible, but on some of the bends the alkaline had got in, and once there's a bit of corrosion the copper becomes very brittle. There are more broken tracks at the edge of this ribbon section too, and on this piece that carries the flash sync signal. I can repair those broken tracks, but nothing yet is shouting out as being wrong, and I still haven't figured out how to test that voltage regulator out of the camera. So I'll stare at my diagram a bit more to see if I have a brainwave. I haven't had that brainwave yet. I did pop out capacitor C3, which is there to smooth the output from the voltage regulator, but it seems fine, so it went back in. I've repaired the two tracks heading to the flash sync switch because I don't think there's much space in there for wires. The broken tracks on this ribbon section might be difficult to deal with, so I'm just going to lay in some wires for that job and hope I can find a route over the top of the prism for them. Beyond that I'm going to reassemble the camera and try it again with the oscilloscope. I have tried the oscilloscope on the working camera, so I have a bit more of an idea what I'd expect to see in there. It's not particularly exciting. All the clever stuff is done internally in the main chip, with these two apparently being switching modules, and this one being an analogue chip for the exposure meter. So I'll see you again in a few seconds of your time, or a few hours of mine. And for a quick sanity check, here's the voltage regulator wired up on some breadboard. The blue trace is on the battery voltage at just under 6 volts, with the yellow trace on the output from the regulator reading a steady 2.6 volts, which is about right, and it looks stable, which is the main thing. And as if by magic it's sort of back together again. We've gained a few more non-original wires. This red and green pair come over from IC1 to replace the broken tracks on the ribbon section down here. Then there's another pair down here that come from the trigger switch. I'd already inserted this pair before that bring battery power up to the shutter speed PCB. So now I'll make sure there are no obvious shorts and maybe try powering it up again with the oscilloscope attached. OK, here goes nothing. I've got yellow connected to the output of the voltage regulator and blue connected to the switched ground pin. Battery positive is permanently connected. Well that's not right, but I figured I'd film that bit anyway just in case it worked or exploded. I'll go away and test the thing properly and return shortly. OK, I wasn't getting a good ground to the shutter speed board while it isn't bolted to the chassis, and now I have, that is ugly. Blue is on the middle pin of the voltage regulator and yellow is on the output. When the camera is turned on, the blue trace should remain grounded by the transistor. Unfortunately, no matter how hard I stare at my circuit diagram, I don't know which chip actually turns the camera on. It will either be IC1 or IC2, but with no documentation on either of those I'm at a bit of a loss right now. After that I just went round in circles, testing what I could think of and basically getting nowhere. I swapped the two capacitors that are supposed to prevent the voltage regulator from oscillating, and that did nothing, but I didn't really expect it to as I'd already tested the original caps several times. I put the speed selector and ISO resistor boards back together in case that made a difference, but it didn't. So I gave up and went to bed. As you might expect, I kept waking up thinking about it, and now I have a few fresh thoughts. Although my mega circuit diagram helps in tracing electrical faults, it doesn't give that much information on how the system actually operates. For instance, if we look at the base of the power on transistor, it is connected to this track with something in the region of a 2K resistor to this track that leads to pin 39 on IC2, and an 8K resistor to ground. So if no power is applied to this track, the base of the transistor is grounded and it will remain off. 
Whereas when a voltage is applied here, it will defeat the 8K resistor to ground, turning the transistor on, which in turn connects ground to the voltage regulator, thereby turning it on. If we now look at pin 39 on IC2, it's listed as TRB, and looking elsewhere, TRB is transfer, the transfer switch being the one up here, which is depressed when the shutter fires, and stays that way until the activating lever drops back into the hole in the winding cam once the film advance has finished. But that still doesn't tell us anything that helps to solve the problem. Could it be as simple as a faulty power on transistor? I somehow doubt that, but I guess it's worth lifting it out and testing it, so I'll strip that lot apart again and have a look. No, replacing that transistor made no difference at all. In fact, after that the camera didn't even go into that wild oscillation when I powered it up. So I went away and took a load of measurements from the working copy, which it turns out isn't actually working all that well, but I'll ignore that for the time being. But there are two tracks between IC1 and IC2 that should be showing a signal at around 51Hz, as you can see on the scope now. These are marked as SPAD and LAD, whatever that means. So I went back to the project camera, and this time it's starting up properly, or at least sort of properly. It should stay awake for 10 seconds and then go to sleep, at which point that signal should disappear, until I wake the camera by half pressing the shutter button. But the camera just keeps waking itself as soon as it goes to sleep. Additionally, there's no signal on track LAD on this camera. I think I'd got the yellow probe on VDD, or chip power, for this clip. However, I've got the camera set on self-timer mode, and having pressed the shutter button, the self-timer light blinks and the shot is taken 10 seconds later. Thusly, so it isn't entirely dead. And for a closer view, I'll press the shutter button, and the camera will blink away for 10 seconds, before taking the shot and advancing the film, before returning to its ready state. So I just need to figure out why it sometimes won't start at all, why there is a missing signal on track LAD, why there's sometimes massive oscillation in the power supply, and probably about a million other questions. Shortly after that I was firing the camera and it appeared to jam. Upon investigation the transfer switch has now failed, so it was attempting to advance the film while the winding lock was still engaged. I knew that the transfer switch can be a cause of problems on these cameras, and I'd checked its continuity several times, but it's entirely possible that the contacts inside are corroded, just like everything else on this camera, and I might need to find a replacement switch. So in the best traditions I'm going to end the video now. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel, not forgetting to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when a future video is released. That's it for now, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.